My name's Andy Ramage. I'm the co-founder of One You Know Beer, the co-founder of the Dry App online alcohol-free community and lifestyle brand. And today I'm going to talk about what alcohol does to your brain and it's not good. But the beautiful news is that beautiful brain of yours will recover quickly. But check out today's episode and I'm gonna talk about what alcohol actually does to that beautiful brain of yours. All right, so this morning I was gonna talk about alcohol and your beautiful brain. Because this is something that gets overlooked so often. We just don't put two and two together and come up with four. We just don't even put the two and the two together. We just assume that drinking is one of those things that you do. No one questions it, do they? I'm sure you've never questioned it. I never questioned it. I never thought actually what is happening inside my brain and body when I drink. I just drink, right? And I get this warm, fuzzy feeling and that's what we do. And everyone else did it. My parents did it. My best friends do it. We do it when we commiserate, celebrate. We go out socially. We just drink. We don't even call it its technical name. We never refer to it as a drug. That's what those people take. The illegal stuff is all about the drugs. We don't even associate alcohol as a drug. So many people I've spoken to, when I've talked to them about that, they'll be like, no, alcohol's not a drug. You know, heroin's a drug. Alcohol's not. That's just like the drink, the porter, a drop of whiskey, whatever it is, it's not. It's a drug like all the other drugs. And when you start to pause and reflect like I've done over the last 10 years and think, actually, what does happen? Why do you get that little warm, fuzzy feeling? And then I started to realize that actually, it just blows up that beautiful equilibrium inside your brain. No one thinks about that, do we? We don't think about it when we're drinking. Don't think actually what's going on, but what is going on, it attacks us at the neurochemical level, the neurotransmitters, that's where all drugs focus. And in doing so, it explodes that perfect balance inside our mind. So it overstimulates certain neurotransmitters. And in doing so, our poor brains then have to work overtime to maintain equilibrium again and very much that's where you end up with that sense of hangover i guess that tiredness that jadedness you go into that state of withdrawal quite quickly when it comes to alcohol because even you have many withdrawals within the evening of drinking or the day of drinking whatever that looks like for you we don't even consider those things do we why do you think when you have one drink or two drinks if you were to stop you get that tired feeling don't you that groggy slightly don't feel relaxed that like little slight warm glow is gone and you're just left with this hollow empty feeling and the only way out of that is to have another drink but actually think about what's going on your brain's going into a state of mini withdrawal you've just blown up that neurochemistry those one or two drinks now it's trying to maintain equilibrium yet at the same time your brain's then craving more to get you out of that state of withdrawal because the pain and the anxiety of that is causing you to want more to bump your way out of it and then you're chasing that dragon aren't you chasing that dragon of alcohol because then the two becomes free then what'd you do what'd you do after free drinks because if you were to stop after free drinks you're going to feel even more tired more groggy that mini withdrawal is going to be slightly more intense so i know what you do you have another drink so free becomes four and then you've tipped the scales, you've tipped the scales into something completely different, proper intoxication at that stage, neurochemistry, haywire that's gonna have to recover from. Your brain's flooded with now acetaldehyde, which is the carcinogen, the carcinogen that's now in your body. That's the same bracket as asbestos, radiation, as smoking. That is the chemical that's created. As soon as it goes into your mouth, it starts to create that, by the way. Acetaldehyde. This is the toxin. This is the residue of what alcohol does when it gets inside your body. That's the thing that lingers around, that gives you those hangover feelings, experiences. So not only have you blown up your neurochemistry, you've just flooded your body with a carcinogen, which is cancer-causing carcinogen. You can't escape it. And then think about this. Let's play the tape forward a little bit. It makes perfect sense that if you were throwing that drug into your body consistently for a year, a decade, 
two decades, three decades, four decades or more, that actually over time, it completely upsets your neurochemistry. It can leave you in a dopamine deficit, so the sparks of joy are less joyful, because rather than being a dopamine neutral, your dopamine deficit because your brain is preparing in advance for this onslaught of fake dopamine. So therefore, the small joys are not joyful anymore. This beautiful scenery, a sunrise, the embrace with a loved one are not joyful because the little bump of dopamine they would give you only get you back to neutral. You're not experiencing those positive bumps anymore. So the world feels a bit gray, a bit gloomy. Think about that. This happy go, fun time, lucky past time that's socially pressurized, that's socially ubiquitous. The only drug in the world when you try and give it up, you get slaughtered for it, is genuinely sucking the joy out of your life over time. And given enough time, decades, think about the average drinking career. It's not a year, is it? It's not even five years. The average drinking career is 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years or more. It is no wonder then that alcohol is, in my opinion, the number one cause of dementia. The real number one cause of dementia is head trauma. The second number one cause of dementia is alcohol. But I put alcohol on top of that because there's not a lot you can do about head trauma and alcohol, in truth, causes head trauma. Not only from a neurochemical standpoint, but it's the thing that probably makes us trip over and bang our heads or get into situations where we do wallop ourselves in the head. So unbeknownst to us all those decades of blowing up our neurochemistry and this beautiful brain and our lovely brain trying to recover from it given enough time it's the number one really the number one preventable cause of dementia that's nuts no one's thinking about that no one even talks about it no one even knows about it we just smash it back and think oh it's just drink that's, but now like when you pause and reflect and really think about what it's doing to that beautiful brain of yours, you get a different story. But here's the beautiful thing. If you remove it, because you're courageous enough to remove it, that beautiful brain of yours will recover so quickly. That neurochemistry will settle down. That dopamine deficit will come back to dopamine neutral. Suddenly the sunrise will be amazing. This beautiful scenery will feel joyful. The embrace with a loved one will feel joyful again because you'll be getting those dopamine bumps from those natural things in your life. The world won't feel as great, it'll feel bright again. You'll be sharp again and on it again. You'll reduce your risk of that terrible disease that is Alzheimer's and dementia. You'll feel good again, you'll smile good again, your skin will bounce back again, you'll recover again. What a gift again of this dry adventure that we're all on. So that is what I wanted to share with you this morning, my team. All right, team, thank you for joining me yet again on my alcohol-free adventures. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the subscribe bell, tell your friends about this, and down below is loads of free resources, including my seven steps to transform your relationship with alcohol. It's all in the show notes below. Until next time, see you soon.